So with the Huawei Mate 30 series, we know the specifications, we know more or less what they're gonna be like, but the elephant in the room is, how are Huawei gonna deal with the Google situation and will people outside of China be able to use the devices with Google as they would have before. And after IFA, Yu Chengdong, who is the consumer CEO for Huawei, talked to some media and let slip a few details that on the surface don't really look that great. At least if you're outside of China looking to buy a Huawei device with Google services. We'll wait for the EU market. And if US policy does not change for Huawei, the company will use the ASOP and let the consumer install Google apps by themselves under a new solution. You said that the Mate 30 series will be sold first in the Chinese market. That may seem very normal, but it isn't. Huawei do not launch their flagship products first in China. This may sound strange because Huawei being a Chinese company, you would assume that all of their products are first launched in China. Anyway, considering that 50% of Chinese smartphone sales basically are from Huawei. But actually going back for the last four or five years, Huawei always launched their flagship products, the P series and the Mate series in Europe. Europe is Huawei's second biggest market. And in fact, those flagship products, the P series and the Mate series are always launched and sold first in Europe and not China. So this essentially means one thing, Huawei have not figured out a solution to giving consumers a phone with Google services or an easy solution for consumers to install and use Google on the new Mate 30 series phones. If they had done, they would be launching it in Europe first as per normal. But according to this article, they will be looking to launch it in China first, which means that they are still looking for solutions even though the launch is about a week away. All is not lost for Huawei though. Yu Chandong also said that Huawei is trying to find a solution to let consumers install Google apps on the Mate 30 series by themselves. Huawei is investigating the solution to allow consumers to install applications of their own choice. So the biggest problem for the Mate 30 series is if they cannot somehow put Google mobile services on the phone. Whereas not having apps pre-installed on the phone is quite an easy fix. For example, YouTube or Gmail can be accessed in some different ways. Not having access to the Play Store and more importantly, Google Play Games is a really big problem because if you want to play games on Android, you need to link them to the Google Play Games app so that you can save your progress and register for the game. And if you can't do that, then you probably won't be able to download any of those games. And there are a ton of other apps that also require access to Google mobile services. As for now, the 19th of September is the official launch date for those phones where they will be unveiled and we'll get to know absolutely everything about the new improvements for the devices. But more importantly, what exactly Huawei say regarding the solution to not having direct access to these Google mobile services. Or if they found a solution and will go ahead with the worldwide launch as normal. Screen protector leaks came out of China yesterday for the Huawei Mate 30, the non-pro variant. These confirm the addition of a much bigger notch, which has been leaked and rumored for quite a while. And these leaks seem to just confirm that even more. A prolific Huawei leaker and poster posted this online yesterday, detailing the full rumored and expected specifications of the Mate 30 Pro. This is in line with all of the previous leaks that we've seen. Although on this spec sheet, there is only the Kirin 990 5G integrated chipset used. I've been told from a Huawei store here in Shenzhen that if you do want to buy the Mate 30 Pro, there is a 4G version. So about a week away now to the launch and we will be getting more and more hardware leaks and hands-on leaks as we get closer to the launch for sure. But the biggest question remains, what is Huawei going to do with the software situation? I'll keep you guys updated, of course. But anyway, that's it for now. I will see you in the next one.